Hi guys and uh, welcome back to the channel. Today's weather is pretty shocking. It's blowy, it's rainy and uh, yeah not the best really but uh, I'm going to test out a new camera today and I thought why not test it out in these conditions to see how it performs. So I'm going to head down, get into a uh, man-made hide for some uh, some water birds hopefully heron egrets and things like that just to see how it performs just a quick test on some of the stills and maybe a little bit of video but uh let's get in and out this weather before the showers come over again and we'll get amongst it So hi guys, just coming out the weather now, it's kind of rainy and then sunny. So perfect day today to uh, test out my new camera. Um, and I don't think I've said really to many of you, especially through social media, that I've bought a new camera, but uh, today I have now got the Canon R7. Um, many of you are probably wondering why on earth I've bought the uh, Canon R7 when I've got an R3, but actually um, as a professional photographer out in the field a lot of the time, um, as good as the cameras are, sometimes we do get issues with a particular camera and it's always good to have a backup. So I bought this primarily as a backup from the R3 um, and also for birds in flight because it's very, very lightweight and paired with the 100 to 500 there, 4.5 to 7.1, that effectively gives me a focal length then of 800 millimeters with a 1.6 um, crop there and with the RF 800 f11 that gives me 1280 millimeter reach which is quite extensive and this sports a 32.5 million um, pixel sensor um, it's an aps-c sensor um, obviously as i said cropped not full frame um, the iso range isn't amazing it's um 32,000 iso but still not as good in low light being a crop sensor as the uh, r3 is but for the majority of the time in good light and some low light conditions, I'm sure it will do pretty well. So it does full HD, um, slow-mo 120, and it does 4K 60 um, as well. So I probably won't use it so much for video, but the capabilities there as well. And it's got a Digic X processor, the same as the R3. And the R3's AF is comparable to the R7, so they're pretty much the same. Um, the EVF isn't as good. I mean, you can go on and on and on and on, really. The battery life isn't as good. Uh, the price I paid for that, 1,350 quid against an R3, which is just short of 5,900 pounds, is a hell of a difference. Yes, the weatherproofing isn't as good. You know, there's loads of things that aren't the same. Um, not as good video. You know, the buffer rate's not as good. I mean, the buffer on this fills up pretty damn quick, but actually, um, you know, it says maximum, I think, shooting, max raw, and it does 30 frames a second with electronic, and it does 15 frames a second mechanical, and that's still pretty rapid. And yes, the buffer does fill up rather quick. It's got UHS-2 um, SD XC cards in there, so it doesn't have the fast cards that the R3 has, but at least you cut down on the cost there as well. Um, so the buffer rate does fill up pretty quick, but if you look at the back with settings, when you shoot in full raw, yes, you can get a bit of lockout there and it doesn't recover that quick. But actually, if you look at the settings, you can play around with it. C raw um, is effectively the same size as raw and you get a hell of a lot more pictures out of it. And actually there's very little degradation there in any of the image qualities. I think it's possibly maybe, and I'm not checked this, that it could shoot maybe from uh, different bit, bit rate levels from dropping down to C raw, but I'll have to look into that. And if you guys know, please let me know in the comments. And that's really one of the main reasons why I got this. It's good to have a backup. It's good to have a lightweight outfit if you're off trekking for the day, if you're not necessarily going out for too much photography, you know, you just want to sling it in your bag. It's better than having the R3 in there, um, which takes up a little bit more room. But I'm looking forward to putting it through its paces. I've not really taken that many pictures with it, probably about 50. Um, I came down briefly yesterday here because my friend Terry and, uh, and Paul, who's the other owner of the lake, um, they've seen an osprey going overhead um, and it circled around the lake 
um, but unfortunately they were here working so it didn't stop but i came racing down with the camera i had the r7 with the one to five there ready to go and i took a few shots of some dabchik and some heron but today hopefully less talking bit of waffle i know but this is the reason why um, i bought this camera yes it's it's not like the r3 but to be honest it's a hell of a good camera and there's an awful lot in there for the price you pay um, to get any major reviews on this, please check out other people's reviews on YouTube. There's loads of stuff that people go in depth with. You know, I will put some raw shots and I will put some um, edited shots as well, side by side on the, uh, on the vlog as well, so you can see the difference. But so far, I've taken some shots of a heron as well, which I'll just show you in this picture here. So this is the raw image, um, which is quite nice, taken at quite distance, and this is the edited image afterwards. And I was really, really pleased. The actual, the eye, AF on there um, is amazing. They, I couldn't notice any difference in the tracking of the subjects when I'm saying when I'm using the R3. So anyway, yeah, enough waffling about that. Let's get the lens on and uh, let's get shooting. So guys, here I am, um, set up, ready to go. And what I did mention, failed to mention earlier on was that um, I did set this camera up as soon as I got it. Um, I got it on Monday and um, got it set up straight away, pretty much similar settings to my R3. The menus do vary somewhat. There's obviously a lot more choice, a lot more menus with the R3 being a professional body, this being for the enthusiast um, more so. So, but you know, it's relatively similar. As I said before, the AF system is, um, pretty much the same um, but it's so nice it's so lightweight I mean that's just like weighs literally next to nothing especially with the one to five there and as I said I've got that 800 mil reach now um, just focusing in so at the moment weather conditions aren't great and I've got some diving dab chick over there they're quite a distance but already and I've got animal IAF enabled and I've got a um, dab chick right over the far side of the lake there and it's picking out the head not the eye but it's picking out the head which is pretty damn good um, and i've got this set up a certain way so i've got my back button there and i've also got um, a star button um, which is my a lock button as a uh, for spot as well so it's just pick out the head and i can just select bottom finger at the very bottom with my depth of field preview button i click that and it will stop um, doing the iaf and animal detection so i can just take that off and then just use the, the single spot in the middle just to track on the subject rather than searching around for, a, for an eye all the time. Um, but, you know, really, really nice. There is a thing about it. I'm, I've got tiny hands. I really have. Um, they're small. If I had massive hands like shovels, having to grab hold of this, um, it would be kind of difficult because I'm used to, I'm used to having the pro body. I'm used to having that big beefy grip you can get your hands around. This is a little bit different getting used to it. And also, if you can see here, on this camera, the wheel positions are different and um, inherently on most of the cameras, um, you always have a wheel down here. This time you've got this little push pad there and you've got the little wheel button up there. And that does take, take some getting used to actually, but I'm finding with the ergonomics of it and the way it's positioned, actually my thumb automatically straight away goes there and you just fix down there. It's actually quite nice. Um, you know, it, it's nice to have a little bit of a change on a camera and all the buttons are set off, you know, pretty well and it's all within reach you don't have to sort of fumble around too much they really have thought about it um, and a lot of people say this is a direct replacement for the 7d2 not sure that's completely true to be honest um, i think similar functionality one thing they don't provide with um, the r7 and the r10 to have an additional grip there which is a bit of a shame but actually it just keeps that weight down um, and the battery life on this is pretty good and that's really pleasing to see that you can take old batteries again. So the interchangeable part of things, if you move from a 7D2, if you move from a 5D3, 5D2, 5D4, the batteries go straight in this. I mean, the battery's about 114 pounds a shot. The new batteries are, I think, called NPs. So they are slightly higher energy batteries and they are slightly longer life. But if you still got the old batteries, and I've got three from a 5D3, it's ideal and keeps the cost down. But uh, yeah, right, let's get some birds and um, hopefully we'll get 
a few in the bag. It's quite blowy across the lake today. Um, and I'm hoping there's an island just in front here, if you can see this island here, hopefully there'll be some stuff just coming in and out of there, tucked in out of the wind, but we'll see, we'll give it a go. Um, and hopefully we may even get to see the Kingfisher fly by, but we'll see. So at the moment I've got um, the whole frame enabled for eye detection, um, animal, AF, and I, I press that button so it's got the whole frame and it's chasing around for, for a head and an eye. And that's not getting it straight away, but if I switch across to the asterisk button, which is a single spot, and I get it close to the subject, straight away we've got a moorhen here, and it's all over that moorhen, and it's quite a distance away. Not any good for picture, but it's there. And that's really good. If I switch back to back button for the whole frame, yeah, it's not picking it up. It's getting distracted with the background. But I expected that. It's, it really is too far away. I can't see the eye at all. I'm hoping we're going to get some herons in and out. Um, and I think in between the weather getting better, I'm just going to nip out, walk around the lake, and we'll do a little bit of photography as we go. Um, like I said, this isn't like a full in-depth review or anything. This is just a hands-on first go, really, with the... Uh, R7, but to be honest, I'm, I'm chuffed to bits with it so far. I mean, I really am. Um, you know, it's, uh, if you're starting out in photography or, um, you know, you're moving up from a, a 7D2 or something, you know, this really is worth considering. Um, I think Canon do actually do a loan service where you can have a, like a day or two days for free and then you can have it a little bit longer if you pay a little bit of money just to get you, um, you know, accustomed to the camera itself. But, you know, first impressions for me coming from a professional bodies that I've been using over the years, you know, it's a great camera with a lot to offer. Um, you know, it really is. I mean, the ergonomics, I say it's, and the lightweightness of the camera, um, you know, it's, it's fantastic. And the expensive cards you have to get for the R3, the, the CF Express cards are absolutely extortionate. I mean, they are so much money, 400 odd pounds for a 256 gig card. It's crazy. Um, but obviously that shoots 6K and things like that, and it does 4K 120 slow-mo, and it does get a bit warm occasionally, you know. But, uh, you know, I think for what it is, this camera for the price range, it's, it's fantastic. I think there are um, lots of back orders, pre-orders going on at the moment for this camera, um, and I think it will appeal to a lot of people, you know, um, especially birders who've got a pair of bins, going out to do some birding, stick a 1 to 5 on the end, and... Um, also have the uh, the R7 there. It's just a great combo. On your hip, up you go, bang, good shots in the bag, happy days. You know, you have to cart a big prime lens around. So yeah, really, really good for, for birders, people who want to be out um, trekking around and have it on their, uh, round their neck, on their hip, good to go. So I've got uh, two jab chick out on the lake here and they're still quite a way off. Um, and they don't sit still for very long. They're straight down again, they're up. And already they're straight away. That's picking up the male and the female dab chick. And it's got, it's got IAF and on that subject at quite a distance off at the moment. Um, and I'm in tight at 500 obviously with the crops at 800, um, you know, and it's acceptable at this distance. You know, it's really, really good. It's not hunting. There's a bit of clutter behind. They're up, they're up. And so single spot is great and it's tracking and I'm moving and it's still tracking. It's really good, up and down, dived. It's, it's hunting a little bit when I'm using the whole frame, looking for a head, looking for an eye, but actually it's pretty damn good. And my R3 would do exactly the same um, at this distance. It's just, it's incredible to think what it can do, you know. Um, it's such a game changer. They've got two of these males up. So already, I mean, there's no point in really shooting many images from this distance because it's so far off. But what I'm really trying to ascertain today really is is what it's like on the focus, you know, how the AF performs. 
and I'm sure with this sort of light that, um, you know, this sort of ISO at the moment, I'm shooting at 12 50th of a second, f7.1 at ISO 1250. So, you know, still pushing quite high, but actually the limited images I've taken with it already, it's, um, they're looking pretty good. And when I clean them up as well, if I want to run them through Topaz, um, yeah, they're coming up pretty damn good. And as I say, you've got a bit of room to crop in there with that 32.5 um, sensor on there. Um, gives you that little bit of room to play with. It'd be nice if they got a little bit closer. I could have saved the vlog for a fine weather day um, when there's plenty of action, but I've been itching to get out with it really and give it a go. So I thought, why not come down, get myself in the hide and see what happens. Of course, hideous out there, absolutely hideous. So it's quite intuitive with the, with the buttons there. You've got the record button right on top, just there. A lot of the cameras, you've got it on the back, which is quite nice, but actually your finger goes there, you've got ISO, video, but actually it's quite nice. You know, you can, you just, your fingers get used to it. You know, you really come, we've got a bit of a more hen coming out over there. Let's have a... <coughs> more hen coming out switching just having to get used to the buttons uh, not used to some of these buttons so it takes a bit of time bit of muscle memory there's a uh, more hen coming out in the water comes that rain so we've got a more hen there just coming out of the reeds and it it's got a lot of clutter in front but the still picking out the detail on the bird and the head even though the reeds are in the way at the front I can honestly say so far having used the R3 now for six months looking at the focus for video and the focus for um, a lot of the stills I can't see a great deal of difference to be honest I mean they think it's pretty much a direct copy of the uh, the AF um, of the R3, but um, I mean a little bit more testing to go, but first impressions, yeah, magical. So guys, the, uh, the birds on the water are being a bit skittish. Um, they're all out of the wind and they're all over the far side of the lake. So what we're gonna do now is just gonna head out while the weather's fine and we're gonna have a quick whip round and uh, see what we can see, see if we can tuck ourselves out of the wind. I've got a kingfisher hide down the bottom and I may even just jump in there quickly and um, have a go and see if we can get a kingfisher coming past, but uh, yeah, be nice to see the heron, um, but it's very quiet. I think it's the wind today that's probably putting things off. Um, but we'll persevere and see what we can get. So we're gonna brave the weather a little bit and just tuck ourselves up in the Kingfisher hide, just have a go with this and uh, just to see how it performs handheld. Um, as I said, the weight on it is fantastic. It really is such a lovely combo. I mean, this is like a, a bird photographer's dream really for someone out birding you know you've got 800 reach there on a lightweight outfit fantastic it's got to go and see if the hide is actually still there it's quite a stiff westerly wind blowing today and it's probably blown over um, but it could be a little bit more sheltered in there who knows and maybe a kingfisher will pop by, but it'd be great to get some shots of the kingfisher with this camera. Um, yeah, really excited to have it, to be honest. It's, it's lovely to have a backup, have another camera. I'm very lucky to be able to um, have another. And uh, so soon after buying the R3. Um, and there's many people out there I know that have there's lots of ducks in here. Lots and lots of duck. Lots of people that have got the R7 and some people have returned the R7 and got rid of it. To be fair, if, if you're used to a pro body and you buy an R7, you might think like you're missing out. Oh yeah, the hide's, the hide's down. Um, but to be honest, you know, if you've gone from a 7D to 7D, you know, I think you'd be quite happy and it'll do what you need it to do. I mean, it's a great camera. It's just that low light situation where you're gonna need something a bit better. Right, post is there, hide is down. Um, 
Oh, soaking wet, full of water. Um, this should be fun, better sort this out. So I'm in the hide for uh, a quick half hour, set up here on the, uh, the Kingfisher perch. There we have it. It's uh, just resurrected the lagopus hide there that uh, got blown over and it's full of water and my ass is wet. Um, but gonna have a go in here, hopefully. Uh, maybe a chance of a kingfisher turning up, but the water is really brown with all the water washed down through um, the hills, the valley, and uh, made the water quite dirty. So um, whether or not we're gonna get a kingfisher or not, I don't know, but it's worth a crack. I'd love to see, be able to see what a few of the shots look like on the uh, R7, um, but we'll persevere here for a little bit, give it a go, and um, yeah, hopefully we'll uh, nail a few shots, and then we'll head back um, to the comfort of the uh, man-made hide there and see if we can pick up a heron or whatnot coming through. But uh, yeah, you know, so far guys, you know, it's a bit of a suck it and see, get out amongst it. I don't really plan this. Just wanted to get a lens on the camera, get out, um, have a mooch around, see what's about and see if we can get some uh, images. And it's nice to come out in challenging weather conditions, you know, be lovely, picture perfect, you know, no wind, early morning, sun coming up. Yeah, ideal, ideal conditions, but it's nice to shoot from the hip a little bit and go out and give it a go in whatever the weather throws at you. But uh, yeah, gonna go quiet, stick the camera away and um, we'll see if we can just wait out for a kingfisher. Whew. Well, it's nice in the tragopan, lagopus hide, um, out the weather. It's supposed to be a break in the weather very shortly, so I'm hoping. Clearly not now. Oh, it's hideous. Look at that. Ooh. Lovely. Ah. Oh, that's a serious shower, that is. The things we do for photography, my gosh. Just got a heron just landed over in an old cracked bit of um, oak there that's come down and it's quite a way away from me and I've just shot there then. Um, it's come out really well. Looking through the viewfinder there, you know, it's really quite sharp. So back in the hide now and uh, managed to get a couple shots of the kingfisher. It didn't stay long. I think it's too windy and the, the coloration in the water was, was pretty bad so it couldn't obviously see much. Um, but I had a fleeting glimpse um, of it flying in and then it landed, literally stayed for a few seconds, managed to get a couple shots in the bag and, um, and off it went and I stayed in there for a further hour and a half and nothing else. But um, now back in the hide, just coming towards the end of the day really, um, we've got a cormorant, a young cormorant over on the other side there. Um, quite a fair distance now and um, still straight away, camera is straight in on the eye, brilliant at quite a distance. Um, and the light's pretty bad now, um, but uh, still picking it out. Now these pictures today um, are not by any means amazing shots. This is just basically just to test the camera out, testing the AF out, testing the ISO out a little bit, and just giving it a bit of a go really in the field to see how it fares. Um, um, but uh, another sort of half hour to go, I think, and then um, head back home. But uh, so far, yeah, pretty good. So guys, that pretty much concludes my initial in the field look at the new Canon um, R7 today. Um, to be honest, I'm absolutely blown away with it. I can't really sing its praises enough, to be honest. It's been a great camera and, you know, I'll go through some of the basic things I like about it and I don't like about it. Um, you know, as soon as I picked it up straight away, 
Um, it's small, it's a lot smaller than I'm used to. I've got small hands, um, which is handy for a camera like this. Someone with big hands might be a little bit tricky trying to grip it. You feel like you're slipping a little bit underneath. But for me, in my hands, um, this is totally different than the Canon R3. Um, but I found it fine, absolutely fine. I mean, I hold on to it. It's in quite intuitive, really. My fingers migrate to the buttons and it's got a new setup at the back, especially with the rear wheel. And I found that absolutely fine. I fumbled a little bit just trying to get the layout right. But once I got there, played with it, absolutely loved it. Um, you know, really, really did like it. So the wheel positions are slightly different and there is no grip. It'd have been nice to have an additional area to put a battery in, but like I said, it's nice to keep it nice and lightweight. Um, okay, so the pros side of it really is the weight. The weight is, you know, fantastic. It's really, really light. Um, and that in combination with that lens, it's so easy, especially for birds in flight, panning it around, which I didn't do a great deal of today, which I will do at a later date. Um, due to the weather, the wind, the rain, it's not a lot airborne today. Um, but I think with birds in flight equally, um, I th we'll be absolutely fine with the, with the weight system with this camera. Um, the price, like I said, 1,350 pounds in the UK, 1,600 US dollars. You know, it, it's a really good price range. There's an awful lot inside that body there for the price. R3, like I said before, 5,900 pounds, six and a half thousand dollars or whatever. That's a lot of money and you get an awful lot in this camera and it's a lot like the R3. Um, the AF, the AF is fantastic. I can't tell any difference with the AF between this and the R3, to be fair. And I shot in the high today, the normal setup, and it was doing exactly the same thing. Absolutely fantastic. Didn't get any diving kingfisher shots, but you know, they do say that the AF on this is on par, if not the same as the R3. Cheaper cards there, so SD, um, UHS 2s, um, XC cards, two slots there, ideal. Um, no expensive CF Express, which cost a fortune. Um, you've got the 1.6 crop, so shooting with the one to five today gives me 800, and then shooting with the RF 800 would give me 1280. So, you know, major, major difference there for the birds in flight. And that 32.5 um, pixel sensor there is absolutely superb. And it's nice to be able to use the same batteries. Um, the new battery in this is model is slightly higher rated, but you can still use batteries from the 5D2, the 3, the 4, um, 5DSR, and you can use it in the other R series bodies as well, obviously not being the R3. Um, Digic X processor, really, really good. 4K60, full HD, slow-mo. Um, haven't actually checked the video out until I get home, but to be honest, I am over the moon with that camera. I did a lot of research, um, wasn't sure if I was going to take the plunge to get it, but I'm so, so glad I did. Um, you know, there's a lot going on in there, like I said, and it's um, weather sealing, yet yeah, it's not obviously up there with the uh, pro bodies. Um, there is sufficient amount of weather sealing there, but to be honest, you know, I'd have a waterproof cover on it and I wouldn't take it out in the pouring down rain, um, but I probably would with the R3 a little bit more but uh, it speaks for itself really. It's, it's the price it's, it's, it's you know, priced at. It's not gonna be fully weather sealed like that. But uh, yeah, thanks for watching guys. You know, it's been uh, a real um, challenging day, like I said, but I've really enjoyed um, testing this little fella out really. And I think I'm gonna have a lot of fun with it. Um, but all in all, yeah. So uh, for those people that want um, a camera for birds in flight, camera on the go, new to photography, you know, and even those seasoned pros out there that want a, a second body um, in their bag, you know, it's a great camera. I did think about the R5. The price tag's a lot higher. The AF is probably better on this one. So I'm led to believe I don't own an R5 and never tried it. The AF is particularly good, but I think this has probably got the edge um, with the AF side of things. It's slightly newer and it's on par with the R3. But um, and I've said there, guys, if you've got any comments for me, please leave them in the vlog description below. Um, contact me through social media, so Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, Vero, and, you know, email. For those who got my email as well, just um, let me know what you think. If you've got an R7, or if you want an R7, or if you did have an R7, just let us know what went wrong, or what you like, and what you're looking forward to when you purchase your own. But uh, that's it for me, guys. As always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you all next time.